Hi folks, this might be the best kept secret in Fusion 360 for reverse engineering. It's an awesome trick. Here's the backstory. We keep a drum of mostly RO water to like a 1% bricks mix solution over here at our training center. We don't have the same RO system that we have next door, so we just fill this up every so often and that works fine. Um, we had a small sump right there. It was kind of a piece of junk, and so we upgraded to a larger sump right here. But to fit that sump in here, we needed to cut an opening. We already had some premix in here, so I didn't want to use a sawzall or something that was going to cause a bunch of metal shavings to go into our premix. So we cut it open with tin snips. No big deal, except it left a really janky looking and frankly sharp edge around it. That's no good. Take a look. All you need to do this is a phone and a tape measure. Popping into Fusion, here's the magic. Insert canvas. We'll pick our file from our computer. I'll select the XY plane and just click OK. The key though is to expand your canvases, right click on the image and choose calibrate. I can then zoom in and I'll pick the three inch mark zoom over, pick the nine inch mark, and we will say that that is nine minus three, which is six inches. We have now calibrated or correctly scaled our image. You can see we had tried doing some um, hot glue before, which wasn't gonna work. That's what made me think of this idea to do a 3D printed insert easily, which is awesome. I'll sketch these three sides, and then on the next one, I'll hit S for shortcut, and arc, I want a three point arc, click my first point, Click my second point, and I can have an arc right down here. Then what I'll do is sketch the outside profile. This I actually want to look a little nicer, so R for rectangle. I'll start a rectangle up here, down here, and the same thing, I will do S for shortcut arc, and I'll do a three-point arc that'll start from here, go to about here, and look like so. T for trim, you don't actually even have to do this. Now, it would normally bother me that these are not concentric. You won't see that because it's the nature of the underside flange. And then we'll want a thin section to extrude through S for shortcut, offset. And we will offset this section in 50 thou. Actually, we'll do 80 thou. Now what we can do is we'll extrude this down 3 quarters of an inch turn my sketch visibility back on. Fusion assumes when you extrude something, you're done with the sketch, which is a fair assumption. E for extrude, and now I'm gonna extrude both faces up a quarter inch. I can hide my canvas now, and you can see we have that. I actually don't like the way this looks. I would rather this be a square inside shape. So let's create some right angles. S fillet, put some nice fillets on the outsides here. One, two, you can pick edges through that are hidden like so. And we'll do the same thing on the insides. Miss one edge, right click on that fillet, edit. Hold down the control key and that shows you what edges you picked. I'll add this edge, we're good. And then we're using the bamboo printer. We still love it. I've got that utility set up here. So utilities make I've got that output, I should say, set up to print to bamboo. Click on my body, click OK. Click on the auto orient. This one was a relatively easy one to, uh, to flip over, but the auto feature sometimes raises, uh, puts it in positions that I wouldn't have thought of, which can be thought provoking and usually better than what I would have come up with. Otherwise, standard settings will be fine here. Slice plate, and what's pretty cool, it's gonna slice that in uh, an hour and a half. That's pretty decent. We'll go ahead and hit print and just print this out of our generic gray. Okay, we'll have to put this in first. That's probably the one design thing I didn't think of or consider is that this doesn't technically fit through there. 
Yeah, so maybe reprint this later, but for now, uh, we got to kick our hose. There we go. Okay, perfect. If you don't have a cordless hot glue gun, go buy one. They're cheap, super awesome quality of life. And if you're like me, you know, I'm 40, I didn't grow up with cordless tools that are like they are today. So not only just the drills and the torque wrenches, but uh, uh, cutoff wheels, sawzalls, like everything's great. The only thing that sinks is we've got uh, mostly DeWalt, some Milwaukee, which seems to be some of the better stuff, the M12, M20 system. Uh, and then obviously a little bit of Makita and then we've got the Ryobi uh, weed eater and blower for the yard and stuff. So that's probably the only downside is the mix of batteries. The other thing is if you are serious about hot glue stuff, it's worth looking into. Um, there's a lot of different types that are way different or better than you just pick up at your average craft store. Um, they've got some that stay, um, they stay hot longer or, you know, uh, cure longer. They've got some that are really strong. We've done it. We've used them for some five axis fixed stream before. And uh, yeah, I'd say that's not, uh, not half bad and certainly checks the two boxes I care about. Number one, safety, not cutting yourself or damaging the hoses. And number two, yeah, it looks halfway decent. We did the same trick years ago, uh, spending a little bit more time taking an accurate measurement of the part with a caliper instead of just a tape measure. Um, and I was trying to fit the bottom metal for a rifle stock and ended up getting it to within, I think about four thousandths of an inch. So it's a really cool trick because the more time you take, uh, the better results you can get. Uh, and if you really want to go above and beyond, there's some sort of photography best practices around putting the part further away and using a zoom lens to minimize that uh, sort of distortion you get of a fisheye effect when you're right up close to a part and the camera's effectively shooting out at angles. And if you want to come here to Zanesville, Ohio and spend time learning either three axis or five axis CNC machining, uh, this is the five axis part you make. It is a miniature V8 engine block, lots of positional and simultaneous workflows around Fusion 360. Uh, we have a UMC 500 and I'm excited to announce yesterday we bought a UMC 350 HD. So we're adding a second five axis to the class as always folks. So hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. Take care, see you soon.